Add it up. Shelly's my generation. Right. Dang, 2008 to now. Right. <laughs> a mom. So I know that she comes with the experience and having been in those high pressure moments. So it will be a true test to see how she stands up to that yeah. being in the blocks next to her and and others because I think um, Dina looks fantastic Dina looks too. amazing. Yeah. So, and then like we've seen this weekend, I I I thought it was cool to see the results and to see that it's three completely absolutely that like the changing of the guard is happening so yeah <laughs> this this summer shall be it's cool though because you kind of get to see it happening um before your eyes and i feel like for as long as i've been in the game it's kind of been consistently the same faces right um but now we're starting to see the new generation come in and do it pretty well 1064 we haven't seen that kind of speed in <laughs> Not in my lifetime. Carmelita. Well, Carmelita did it, yeah. 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 So, um, that should be interesting to to see. But I actually think Shelly Ann is running better than she's ever run in her life. Yeah. And and I don't know if it's, you know, having a baby did something, but there's something about her posture Mm -hmm. when she hits her top end that's totally different from previous years, and I think that's... I'm Team USA too, but I'm picking <laughs> Shelly Ann to, to pick I'm the picking whole thing. Shelly too, <laughs> but I yeah. think there's some truth to what you what you're saying because um, even while we were here working with my chiropractor that I really only get to work with at these major events because mm-hmm. he's based out of Arizona. It was the first time that he's seen me since having my son, and he was like, "I don't know if you should have had this baby sooner, but your body's moving way better than it has before." So there might be some truth to, and I think you used to tell me that too. Back that in women the day, come back, women who came back from having a baby, they would be flying. Mm. You know, so yeah. something happens. Yeah. You know. They say it's the hormones, and the, I know my knees appreciated the relaxing hormones. <laughs> <laughs> That's age, but. My joints definitely appreciated that. So there there might be some truth to that though. Right. That she's running better now. I wonder if she's gonna she's not I don't think she's thinking about retiring. She seems like she's yeah, I haven't why? heard anything about why, would why? She? <laughs> you know? yeah. if she's still running that well. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for so how how did you feel about your performance <laughs> this week? Man, um it was new. Um just to get out there and just to compete with those guys and um, just to be having that experience, me just coming out of high school a few years ago, just not going to college and um, knowing how to run rounds and stuff like that, it was just all a new experience and uh, I, I took a lot in from this experience and I really appreciate that, uh, everything that happened. What, what went into the decision to not go to college? Was it um, a choice or did I, it just happen? <laughs> I think it was just more of um, I deferred my enrollment into this to this fall because of COVID and stuff like that, and um, we didn't have a we didn't have the Olympics last year because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So I was still trying to make that team and see what else is up in the air for me, and um, just try to map out some things and see where I'm at. Yeah, I guess COVID did make things a lot different for. Yeah. You, you said if <laughs> you said we wouldn't be in school if it was COVID if or. Yeah, I probably wasn't sending my kids to school if it had no. happened with yeah. parents. No. I'm with that parent. <laughs> I am too. So, and one of mine did and one of them didn't. Actually, yeah. my youngest daughter was, her school was the only school open in my area. So, wow. yeah. I'm like, wow. So, so she went, but my oldest daughter stayed home. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that, I think the, the whole COVID thing affected everyone in different ways. I I think some people it helped them, you know, because they needed another year to coming off of an injury or they just Mm -hmm. needed another year. And some people that not having that year of competition kind of is is playing some negative dividends in some ways. So um, so it'll be interesting to see how this Olympic year unfolds post-COVID, you know, right. uh, and so t- if we're going to take some, some things that we learned as a result of COVID and, and had to implement, and if those things are going to be, proved to be beneficial, and like 
some people ran a bunch of crazy races last year and didn't run the, their their true race and they're running well now and some people didn't run their race last year and they aren't running so well right. this year so um, it'll be interesting to see how that whole dynamic plays out um, post COVID and at the end of the, this Olympic year so. I, I actually think that um, COVID is the reason why we see a lot of record-breaking performances this year because hmm. I do think that a lot of athletes most of us got a break from competing so whether it's your nursing an injury or just the constant pounding right. the travel the the wear and tear on the body just having a break from all of that um, but I know most of us <laughs> continue to train right um so i think the combination of that like when indoor started and we were seeing like world record performances i just kind of felt like a lot of people benefited from having that break but i think you're also right that some people it didn't necessarily fare out that way for them either right so i i remember when um the postponement came about the first thing um our our coach said to us was that he wanted to um protect our mental health um, he said he didn't worry about us being physically ready but you know he didn't want it to wear on us mentally and I think um, for some athletes that probably having that break because getting out there every day and doing this it is we love it but it's stressful right yes so um, oh <laughs> <laughs> Is it? He chimed in, he very, chimed in very passionately there. <laughs> it I, is really. I think not like not every day, but like you know during COVID, you still training and hoping that there's gonna be some meets open. And you just feel like you you training for nothing basically, mm -hmm. even though you're not. It was hard to find it's motivation just, yes. to get up every day. And, yeah. 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 That's why I chimed. <laughs> you can be honest. We want you to be honest. Yeah. And no. that happens on the coaching side too. Yeah. You know, because. Yeah. Like man, what are we getting ready for? You know, mm -hmm. and it's in terms of planning, right? That had the, just the, the macro cycle, and then all the cycles that go into that right. the big picture. Like, how do we? What are we shooting at? Right. You know, so it's, it's yeah. Some that was a challenge for for our coach too. Mm -hmm. Where it was like, you know, if you guys get the phone call that something is gonna happen, I want you all to be ready, but I don't want to be running you into the ground for no reason right. either. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so you deferred enrollment. Where where are you going? I committed to Arizona State. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Nice. But South Carolina was the first coach. Uh, coach Fry was the co first coach to oh, really? to recognize him as a freshman in high school. And you didn't uh, accept that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Curtis Fry friend, fan, so um, I think it was a big honor to, for him to even be in the conversation of, of going to South Carolina, uh, yes. being a part of that program. But, uh, you know, when he's just a little freshman, he was like, I want that kid. Right there. <laughs> so, gets, so what went into the decision to go to, of course I'm biased for Carolina. I had a lot of success with Coach Fry, but. Um, I just think that it was just, uh, just the coaching staff and the, the environment. I felt very welcome. And it, and they they're similar. They um, my coach and Coach Miller, Coach Dion Miller uh, have similar coaching philosophies. So the training wouldn't be too much different, and it's warm. <laughs> very warm. Very warm. Hot, I hope you're prepared for that. Arizona <laughs> is very very hot. It's a dry hot. Yeah. But I mean, I I remember being recruited and. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually knew from my freshman year of high school that I wanted to go to South Carolina. Coach Fry hates to hear that story because <laughs> I played very much hard to get and he had no idea until I signed my letter of intent. What? <laughs> but <laughs> a lot of what you're saying went into the decision when I finally took my visit that like, and she told me this before I took any of my visits that you'll get there and you'll just know. And that was what happened when I went on campus and it was funny because did you visit South Carolina no okay 
because the South Carolina now versus <laughs> what <laughs> was there when I went, yeah. you know, it's the we do all the work and then the next generation gets what we did. The benefits, yeah. <laughs> so there was no facilities, no locker rooms, no nothing. It was literally a track, a set of bleachers, and that was that. But Coach Fry had the resume. And, and I thought about um, wanting to transition from collegiate to professional. I wanted to go into a program that I thought would be able to take me through both. Now, obviously things happen differently but that was one of the things that I thought about and I was like well he's made it work with other athletes with just this so right <laughs> but yeah I, I mean it would have been nice for you to be a game cop but <laughs> it's cool <laughs> I'm gonna be coaching there kind of sort of so. really okay <laughs> kind of sort of <laughs> okay. I'm um, going back for my uh graduate degree so I'll be a grad assistant That's on, awesome. on staff yeah. so but I don't want to coach at all so <laughs> you don't no oh man you gonna, once you get get going I'm not interested <laughs> I wasn't interested either but <laughs> <laughs> 20 years later here I am you know <laughs> so it's gonna be a, a good way to stay in touch with the sport you know yeah and it, in a, in a lot of ways I come away from meets more exhausted as a coach than I did as an athlete. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. If that was supposed to make me feel like I want to coach, that wasn't it. That was, well, <laughs> that was a good pitch. Well, in, 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 in that regard, maybe not, but it's just the, it's, it's almost like you go through each race with each athlete, mm -hmm. you know, and you know it's it's fulfilling it's it's rewarding you know so i think when you if if you decide to do it that's the part that you'll really fall in love with just seeing an athlete go from a to b from potential to realization of that potential is there's it's more it's, it was more rewarding for me to, to do that than to from for myself to go from from nothing to some some yeah. type of success. So. I think, um, so I definitely want to stay in the sport and continue to pay it forward. I don't want to be on the track every day, mm -hmm. but I am, I'm studying to be a counselor. So okay. I do want to do sports psychology. So I would like to go into the mental coaching of okay. it. Okay. Um, and particularly because that was a big part of my journey and my career turning around. But I don't know if I have the patience to be out at practice every day. And like I was in high school, and I remember asking my high school coach, like, "How do you put up with my teammates?" Because I would see them do stuff that I was just like, as a high school athlete, I don't have the patience for oh, that. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I know, man. I don't know <laughs> that me and coaching would work out because right. I can't want it more than you. Okay, exactly. And so I guess it would have to be very, it, it would have to be a very um, particular group mm -hmm. that I work with in yeah. order for me to actually, and actually my, my, do we call him my high school coach or he was my lifetime coach? <laughs> my coach, um, Coach Lennon coached me from the time I was nine up until I left for college. Mm. And um, I was going through some things with my teammates, you know, where I was the favorite. Mm -hmm. And um, so I finally asked him, like, am I your favorite? And he said, yes, but I'm going <laughs> to tell you why. <laughs> he said, I guess basically what I just said. He right. said, you yeah. come to practice and I give you the workout and you want to be here and you do it and you go out and perform. And that's what makes me coming out here enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And so I've always taken that with me, even, you know, take this for your going off to college and thereafter, you always want to work with someone that wants to work with you. Absolutely. But it's also the energy that you bring to right. that situation as well. So, yeah, I was the favorite, <laughs> but it was because I wanted to work. But for that reason, I don't know if I could coach because I could mm. see myself getting frustrated and I, I'd have to remember it's not me going out on the track. Mm -hmm. Note to athletes, it's, it's not the squeaky wheel that gets the oil, you know. Um, and everybody says you shouldn't have a favorite, but it's just human nature to have right. a favorite. And 
put you in and let it show. But, yeah. Well. Yeah. Close mine and let it show. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, you know, my favorite athletes, just like you said, are the ones that show up every day ready to work, you know. Um, and they're the ones that get the oil. They're the ones that get the attention. Yeah. Um, because if I have the philosophy of if if you take a step, then I take a step. You don't take a step, I don't take a step. Because just like you said, I can't want it more than, than they do. That's when it becomes talking getting back to the mental side of this that's when it becomes detrimental to the coach because you're like man I see all this potential and they don't want it but I'm gonna make them do it you know right. I'll, I'll make them do it if it kills me you know right. and I almost died you know <laughs> just trying to get some kids to do some stuff <laughs> like that so um, but that's so true so Justin you're 19 yes at the Olympic trials yes what lessons do you take from this experience? Oh man, um, the biggest thing I took from this is no matter what the outcome, you're one of the few to come out here and compete. Uh, not everybody, everybody wants to be just to go to the Olympic trials and just to make the team, but some fall short, which I did today, and just it, it motivated me just to want more to uh, to want to do better next year or three years from now, and just it just made me more hungrier mm -hmm. and just ready for the next opportunity that I get. And don't eat eggs if you're <laughs> vegan. Yeah. I don't want to waste the food. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I ordered something and I didn't fully read the description and it had eggs in it and I was just like ah. Oh, no. Yeah, we get there. It. Yeah, some bad luck. But, yeah. But it's okay. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Okay. So what happens from here? Um, so next, do you have meets for the summer, or? Yeah, I'm gonna try to get into a few meets this summer and um, just see what I can pull out the hat and um, if everything goes well, go a different route. If not, just go the other route. You know, don't really have a set plan yet. That's fair. It's still. Yesterday was just a few hours ago. Yes. Yeah. Be in the moment. Yeah. For coaches too, like I said, we go through this with with you guys, with the athletes. So. Well, I have to say, at 19 to be here, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Thank you. That, that's really. Yeah. This would have been his fourth national team he made too. Oh. Um, Damn. Oh. Nice. Oh. So you've done. I, I guess it's a little different now because back then <laughs> it was youth and juniors, but now it's like under twenty. Yeah, There's no more youth. Mm. I did uh, two under twenty teams. I did one under twenty world and one under twenty Pan Ams, and I okay. did a senior Pan Am team. Okay, nice, nice, nice. nice. Okay, mm. all right. I broke the world record in the four by four. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And then he broke the U18 world record. So were they? Was the, <laughs> did the women do it that year too? Yes. Okay. No, that that was my record, record that they. Broke. Okay. Yeah. 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 I remember they they they. I heard your name when they yeah. when they announced that. Yeah. Nice. That was incredible. Yes. Down in Costa Rica. Yeah, those are some good memories. Well, if I could give you a piece of advice now, 25 years later. Be in the moment, because the there's a lot of those experiences that I don't really remember. Mm. Because you're super <laughs> focused on like the task. Yes. That the moment becomes fleeting, and then I just asked you, so what's next? Let me get through this before I start worrying about what's next. Yes. So, um, yeah, hold on to the experiences and, and being present and taking in everything. I was 30 before I realized like, oh wait, I've been to some cool places, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I have some cool stamps in my passport, but I don't remember. I just stayed in my hotel room and focused on my race. So cherish the moments because it goes by very, very fast. And then you'll look back and be like, well, wait, what happened? Or things don't go as you plan and it all gets lost in but there's always some victory or lesson or something in everything yes so I like to think so try to slow down and remember those moments take those moments in thank you
That's Paper some good advice. Some, Thank you. Oh, some words of wisdom. <laughs> oh, that's, those are gems. What about from the perspective of a mother? What advice would you give? Oh my gosh. <laughs> An up, 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 up and coming star like uh, Mr. Robinson. Oh my God. My, I mean, my big thing from since she was a little girl to now is basically the same thing. Have fun. I knew enjoy, she was going to say that. <laughs> enjoy. You know, because you see people get so. They just want to be number one, and they want to win, and they and they it takes away from the, the sport and enjoying the sport and right. enjoying the talent that you bring to the sport. And uh, and then I always I always say let people remember you for how well you carry yourself and how well you, you behave. The, apart from the medals and the accolades, when people will come to me and say, "Oh, your daughter so well behaved on the circuit," that was like. Best That's better than anything. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the best thing. So I think mm -hmm. just make your parents proud of who they raised. And when you go out there, you'll go out there. And when you do, just always remember they're either there with you or at home, but you want to make them proud with how you carry yourself. Yes. Gems. <laughs> Gold. Yep. So the trip was worth it just to get that advice <laughs> yeah, from these two. Yes, 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 it was. Was it a, a choice? Were you thinking about not coming? or? Cause no. this, this is an interesting <laughs> Olympic trials, I have to say. Like, No, nah, this, was, this was the goal. Um, it was always to come here and just... I, I had met a different goal each day. So the first day, place top three. After I got done running, my next goal was to get treatment, cool down, make sure my body's good for the next day. The uh, second day, same thing, place top three. Uh, don't strain yourself too much, but make sure you get into the final. Uh, didn't didn't work out. Okay, I gotta, you know, after you not get what you want, you know, you still gotta come back to yourself. And I took a little bit of time. Then my next goal was to cool down, stretch, to find my coach, get some fluids back in. So this this was always the goal, just to get to this point. So I could say I made it and gave it my all. Just better next next time. Mm -hmm. You got time. Yeah, <laughs> nineteen. You got plenty of plenty of time. Yeah. I want to hear the story about going to your coach when you were nine for a month and changing her. Into a runner. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. So you told them that story? Yeah. You, can tell it. So, <laughs> you want me to tell the story? Okay, well then if I'm gonna tell the story, I'm telling the whole story. So <laughs> my mom used to take me to Colgate women's games every year. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. You took me like two or three times yeah, before this times. this year. Um and I went to Catholic school and she would take me in my Catholic school uniform. We had my gym uniform. We wore this white polo shirt and these big, ugly, hideous red shorts. <laughs> there was no shape to these shorts. There was no, oh, nothing, she's really telling the whole nothing story. fashionable <laughs> about you see me now. So right. just think about me in those red shorts. <laughs> in these St. Saint Catherine of Siena red, I wonder if the uniform is still the same. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I had absolutely no form. I was so flat-footed. It was at Pratt University. Um, and the track, I don't even know what that surface is called. It wasn't like a Mondo or anything. It was blue and it was it's like this plastic, plastic surface. Yeah. yeah. And you could literally <laughs> hear me like my footsteps were echoing throughout the, build, <laughs> throughout the throughout the It was awful. Man. It was absolutely awful. So this year, for whatever reason, she ran into. Was he your teammate in Trinidad? No, I actually didn't. He was, he was a friend of friend, your godmother. Mm -hmm. He lived in the same subdivision they lived in. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know him because he's a couple years younger than me. Mm -hmm. But he remembered me from when I used to run for Trinidad. Okay. So let's backtrack so, real quick because you might, you may or may not have heard the accent. She was born in London. I hear. It, competed yeah. in London up until she was 13. Had some records in Crystal Palace. Okay. Long jump 100, 200 that she used to cry to run. Ooh. <laughs> and, then, and then no, well, no, I, we, gotta, we gotta fill in the whole the whole story and then moved to Trinidad 
Where? What was the name of the team? Hampton, Hampton Athletic Club. Oh, okay, I think and, I heard And she it. brought yeah. panty shorts to Trinidad. Nobody in Trinidad was wearing what? panty shorts. And she <laughs> started like, the whole, so notice where I'm going. The uh-huh. whole 400 meter diva. I get it. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so then Coach Paris, we used to... Coach Paris ran for my team. Okay. He and Sean were friends. And so they knew me. They're a couple years younger than me. They knew me. I didn't know, I didn't, I remember seeing Sean, but I didn't know him, we weren't friends. But he came up to me at Colgate Games after she had run, and honestly, I was, I didn't let her see me, but I was laughing, I was like, oh my God, she's horrible. <laughs> okay, this is the first time I'm hearing this part. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> goodness but anyway he came and he said um is that your daughter well he introduced himself and he said is that your daughter and I said yeah you didn't say no no I don't know her yeah I know no it wasn't that bad so I said uh, yeah and he said uh she's gonna be great and I'm like what and he says yeah she looks like you and I'm like no nothing oh, like her. but he he also said that before knowing that I was her right. daughter okay. like he saw me he saw her and he mm-hmm. said oh she's good mm-hmm. she's gonna be good he's got the and eye. then somebody said that's yeah. her mom over there and he mm-hmm. came and introduced himself then at that point then he started telling me he knew me from Trinidad and right. um so then he just said um let me coach her for a month and I was like coach her what, what do you mean I think what were you like eight or nine nine yeah so I so I asked her, I said, well, do you want to go train with him? And he said, she said, yeah. So we literally would drive, it was during the indoor season, so we would leave Long Island and drive to um, the Armory in Long mm-hmm. Island. Yeah. What, two or three times? Three? Three, three times, times a week. A week. Yeah. We would wow. drive up there for a month. And I still, I mean, I would watch him with her. He worked on her form. I don't think he even did any kind of... Yeah, no, my... Like, he, yeah, he, it was just form. It was just form. Mm-hmm. He worked on her form. And I would sit up there and watch her. I'd be like, why is this guy wasting his time? I really didn't think she was that good. <laughs> and then, um, so her first meet, we go up to the armory and he puts her in the 60 meters. And uh, she won. And she looked like a completely different person. I was like, yeah. my no first way. time in spikes, too. Yeah. And my footsteps weren't <laughs> echoing throughout the building. Wow. And then she tripped at the end. I oh, thought no. she had oh, yeah, a heart that, that echoed. That? <laughs> she went down. <laughs> I said, oh my God, she's dead. <laughs> I thought she had a heart attack. I just didn't know how to walk in spikes right. and I didn't pick my feet up. Crazy. But she beat everybody and I was wow. like, this is crazy. How did you know? And he said, I just saw it. He's got the eye. Yeah. yeah. He had the gut ones too. Yeah. He, um, we had such a relationship that like, he could break my race down mm-hmm. to like a new pace down to the second. Mm-hmm. And he would literally tell me like, so remember in the eighth grade, he's like, um, I don't know what I'd been running all season, maybe like 56, 57. And then we got to, I don't remember what, what the meet was. It was, it was like one of the last like championship events. And he said, um, all right, I want you to go through in, what was it? 26. I can't remember the splits, but whatever it was, she just hit the I exactly. looked at him. No, I actually ran faster, yeah. <laughs> but I looked at him like he was crazy. Like what? You want me to come through and what? It was like 26. I ended up running 54 or something, mm. but it was like come through in 26 and come back in whatever would have ended mm, up being 55, yeah. 29. Yeah. And coach Joseph, it was two coaches. I came through the 200. And now I can tell y'all my secrets because I'm retiring. Uh oh. Listen up. (laughs) So I came through the 200 actually in 25, and I usually make my move at 150. Mm on that this was indoor so it's two laps and coach joseph was over at the um the 150 but he saw like how fast i came through and he was over there saying all right go easy go easy but i kept going and i ran 54 i vomited and puked all over the place after that race but we just had that kind of relationship that early on that like he could tell me like and i'd look at him and be like Okay, I'm scared as heck. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I'll go do it. Right. And but yeah, he saw me with the big red shorts, plopping all over the place. That's and amazing. he just cleaned up my form and obviously he did more than just clean up my form, but he coached me till I left for college. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Fifty four. Yeah. 
That was, that was my 13? first ever 400. Really? Yes. How old? Um, freshman. I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Don't y'all forget that. <laughs> <laughs> And he, and he just about school. puked all over the place, too, after that. Yeah. You know? I was about to quit. <laughs> yeah, it takes a special... I mean, by that yeah. point, the, she said I started out running the 60 and the 200. They set me up. They were like, we'll let her run mm-hmm. the 100 and the 200 this year. But she's right. a quarter miler. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. I didn't get a set of... I was straight in the floor. <laughs> right. oh, okay. Well, you are older, so you can, you can handle it then. I'm like, okay, whatever. Do you still puke now? No, I don't. I don't even feel it. After oh, you nice, die. nice. I didn't get to that point. I still, I didn't puke this this season though. Mm. No, I lie. I did. I did one time. Mm. I did one time. I embrace the puke now. He never hurts. Wow. Like systems, very good. Must be nice. <laughs> so, what's it like coaching him? What's what are training sessions like? I always try to play to an athlete's strength, but we try to turn their weakness into a bigger strength. Mm-hmm. Um, so having had him since he was 14 years old, um, it's, it's you know, you get a clean slate. You don't have to undo a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but I think when he was still running like 52s and 53s I I knew that he was going to run going to be something pretty special you know so what I try to do early on is is figure out where the athlete's going to be you know not in nine months or not in a year but where they're going to end up four years from now mm-hmm. and then we try to steer them in that direction as early as possible um, but coaching him is um, it's pretty easy actually because <laughs> <laughs> because he's, he's he works hard you know so he, he doesn't if, if anything I have to I have to back him away from um, certain things like mm-hmm. I only need a 26 you know don't give me a 22 five and because that completely changed the workout. Oh man, you know? I, if, if I was training with you, you would get cussed out for that. <laughs> so. I, I would be like, listen, the workout was written this way for, for a, a reason, right? <laughs> Don't come up here messing me up because then I can't do the rest of the workout. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the challenge with me because we'll we'll have something that's supposed to be an aerobic threshold workout and he'll turn it into a capacity workout. Yeah. You know, and then I'm like, well, I ha- now I have to reorient the whole season. So I mean, the whole not the whole season, but the whole cycle for that week. Um, so that's, I mean, getting him to do work is not is not an issue. I mean, I, I don't know if that's a cultural thing in our program, but I mean, I've never really had like a lot of coaches say, "How do you get your kids to run a, a 400?" You know, that's just part of what we do. You know, um, I had a young lady a few years ago, and uh, she was a 400, 800 girl. And I threw her in a mile at a meet at the KU Relays in in, in uh, Kansas, and she went out and ran like 4:55 mm-hmm. in the in a mile. And the guy interviewing her was like, "So how did your coach get you to talk you into running a mile?" And she was like, "He just told me I was in the mile." <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not running a mile. <laughs> okay, right. All right. I'm good. On I that. have tried to get him to run some 800s, and that's where he's like, "Yeah." On that. I yeah. can agree. I See can you, agree. Coach. But he's ready to run like 146, 147. You know, he's oh, okay. ready to do that like two years ago. But well, what's that gonna do for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't want to do that. You. I agree. You don't yeah. want to do that? I'm no, okay. not at all. <laughs> not at all. So it's been it's been really a blessing, really. You know, to have an athlete that um, wants to be great um, and 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 is really focused in practice and. Um, I remember his freshman year, we went to Nationals. This is the same year he ran 54. And he ran 48 at Nationals. Mm. And I had to drag him onto the podium to get the medal, basically. Um, And he's just like so mad after that. And the the next year, I said, what are you gonna run? He writes 45 something on the the board, you know? After running a 48, Mm -hmm. you know, his freshman year. So sophomore year, he writes down 45. And I was like, 
okay, he can do that. <laughs> you know? And so we just sat down and broke down the splits, kind of like what you're talking about, and broke the splits down. Well, you got to be able to do this, and you got to be able to do that. And we just worked towards it, you know. And he he didn't run the 45, but he ran 46.20. And he ended up splitting 44.8 at the World Championships, you know, as a sophomore. So I can't complain about that. It really meets are more challenging than practice you know mm -hmm. um because he he has an, a different way of expressing nervousness than most athletes i've worked with so i don't get nervous coach you get nervous okay you just express it differently like how you're kind of on the edge and kind of temperamental and you know so i got to add to it yeah you do. Wow. <laughs> That's fine. You That's know. fine. I do too. Yeah. And so I'm like, eh. I just, you know, I think that one of the, the art of coaching is uh, knowing when to push and when to pull, yeah. you know, so. I think that's what makes that's, you a great coach, actually, because right. yeah, anyone can write workouts, anyone can, you know, take you through workouts, and but being able to respond to your athlete and give your athlete what they need, um, I think that, yeah. I, I had the reputation oh, of coach hopping. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah. But I had to find the relationship that, mm -hmm. like what I talked about in high school, right. throughout my career, that, like, how do I find someone that wants to work with me, that can work with what I need, mm -hmm. um, it being a collaborative effort. Um, I think that's, that's huge. Yeah. And understanding that athletes might express nerves or adrenaline or hyped up whatever differently mm -hmm. and how you adjust to that right. hmm. that took us some uh <laughs> some some years to figure it out but we figured it out yeah i think things even though things have changed a little bit with college coaches mm -hmm. there is an expectation that certain athletes are gonna i mean look at me one, move, move, move. Move. Yeah, one, one, mm. one season and she's gone. Yeah. Um, I do think going to college is, is no, yeah. at least one year, I think, mm -hmm. is yeah. good. But um, I think they know that if the athlete is that good. I know there's a lot of people who are like, why would you give up your college education to go pro? Well, I don't think a lot of people understand. Um, how the pro thing works mm -hmm. in that you got to strike when it's hot right and you can work into going back to school into your contract right um, but you can't necessarily make back up the money if you're not running as well the next year the right. you're only as good as the last race you ran right i had a hard time with that because she went out in her junior year and before that i was like there's no way she's not going pro she's finishing right until it happened and she ran well enough and then you start realizing well, wait this opportunity may never come right and so you make different decisions mm -hmm. you know, thankfully she went back and she finished yeah um but you do have that's still open to you if you want to do that right. but not necessarily the third contract right so. i think um i'll toot your horn a little bit here too because i think that my longevity was largely based on I always got to be the 10 year old, the 15 year old, the 18 year old, the college kid um, and not rush the process. Mm -hmm. um, and she always told me that if you do the work and you just focus on doing the work and performing, all those other things will happen and they will come. But when you start to get focused on, you know, the going pro, the big contract, the the making the team and this and the that, you what I said earlier, you get lost in having those experiences. And I always say, <laughs> I left college after three and a half years. I mean, I turned pro after my junior year and I went back to school in the fall, but it was the best three and a half years of my life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because even though I was performing on the track, I was a college kid. I did all the partying. I graduated with a 3.7. <laughs> 
So I was in the honors college. I did all the things, but I had an amazing time. And I think, you know, you said it earlier, like always make sure that you're enjoying it. And even when I decided to come back after having my son, that, that was one of the questions that she asked me, do you want to do this? Are you enjoying it? Keeping those things at the forefront and really like staying in tune with the process. Um, I think that's what lends to having a longer and, and fulfilling career because you know you want to go through the different stages and really take the time to enjoy each moment of the way yeah yes. so i agree with that if i could give another <laughs> another gem <laughs> <laughs> another gold nugget <laughs> maybe we ended on that that was really good okay mm. super good, good. Yeah, it was good. really it was really i i was really curious I was really, I was really curious when we put you guys together, you know, because it just dawned on me when you said, "Yeah, come on." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Then if Natasha's here, and it's someone at the beginning of their career, and literally, you know, closing the chapter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're trying to convince me to keep it open, but keep it open. That's it's me. done. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> And with that, another <laughs> another round, right? <laughs> that that was the point. Right, right. Man, that story though with the the, the feet on the on the plastic. Uh, <laughs> It was I can picture that. I mean, I guess yeah. I have that image yeah, in my head. I was just yeah. completely yeah. flat footed. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, to the layperson, apparently, you're not supposed to run like that. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Not at all. No. <laughs> that reminds me of an athlete I had, uh, a freshman athlete, and he ran like 14 7 in the 110 hurdle. And then after he ran that, he came into the stands and he says, so coach, it's better not to take four steps in between oh. than, than three steps. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, my other coach told me to take four steps in between. <laughs> oh and I was gosh. like, oh, I mean, it never even dawned on me to talk about four steps because, yeah. I mean, if he couldn't make three, I just moved a hurdle in so he could make three. And we just yeah. practiced three stepping and then get to a meet and he could three step the race. He's like, that was the first time I've ever three stepped a whole race, you know, oh, wow. I was like, oh. What do you know? So, yeah, yeah. so it's better not to run flat footed, you know? Yeah. In red shorts. Stay mm-hmm. red shorts. <laughs> we gotta find the photos. I was man. Just, I, I say. Have them somewhere. Oh, oh man. Over there. Instagram. Yeah. Go yeah. Find Put it on the gram. <laughs> I have a kid now, so I'll yeah. let you uh, <laughs> dig those things. Like, yeah. Once upon a time, I would have been like, don't show nobody that. But. <laughs> Put it in the retirement video. Yeah. yeah. Like in two years, yeah. Oh, two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might as well World go for it. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at Justin. Yeah. Y'all could be on the team together on the mixed relay. Then we could do another interview. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. You I guys on the mixed you relay together? You were out? Just when I thought I was out. They day. pulled me back in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then he could have the, he had a little clip it of you handing the stop baton right. off to me. Man. Come on, he got this. And a new That's a beautiful record. story. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Oh man. You gotta know when to bow out. Yeah. And I know. Oh. Well, it's a loss for all of us. So. But it was fun while you did it. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> it was. It really was. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Schlepping around the world. All over the world. Yeah. Driving all over America. Yeah. I know what that's like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you miss it, John? Do you um, I'm going to miss this part of it. Um, when she but we'll, left, still, we'll still do these. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not tired. Because yes, even yesterday after she ran, so there was the heartstrings pulling, I wanted to just go find her and hug her and yeah. say it's going to be okay. But the women's hundred was coming. All right, out. I was the same way. I was the same way. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? So I texted her, I'm like, are you okay? All right, where are you? <laughs> oh my God. So I'm nervous. Right. I would probably, and I have a group of friends that we've been friends since college. Oh yeah. And we right. travel all over the, right. the place, all yeah. over the world together. Right. They go to Olympics. They came to the games. Yeah. So, yeah. so we'll probably still do that. Yeah. So. <laughs>
Because I, I just love trash. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm why now, he, you know, he can takes make it another back. tradition. One of my bucket lists is to take Liam and whatever children I have going forward to the major sporting events. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we can now, we can now do that. Watch yeah. as so a I have family. A so you say you really don't want to be a coach. So what if your son gets into no. running? No? <laughs> no? I don't believe parents should come. I don't think. Kids. I don't either. Go ahead, no. Mom. No. I would do it. <laughs> Mm-mm. No. You would because want I, to? I know, Mm-mm. Oh, okay. No. It's, a, it's that relationship. I mean, they've been so successful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, either. I know a type yeah. person. I couldn't no. do it. Yeah. I, she would, we wouldn't be as close as we are now no. if I had been even tried to be her coach. That, that is, I agree. Yeah. Stay in the box. I agree. Yeah. No, you like. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Did you give advice? Yeah. Yeah. And there I were did. sometimes that I had to be like, Back go off. over there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, and as the years progressed, I kind of. But that know, was in, that was in my professional career that yeah. I had to, right, start to, because you learn very quickly. High school is high school, college is college, professional is yeah. professional. And everybody means well, right. but my high school coach used to call it the peanut gallery. You really mm-hmm. have to right. learn how to turn off you do. the peanut gallery and zone into, buy into Whatever. what it is that you and your coach are working on. And because What's unique about professional is, you know, in high school, you could be a standout phenom. In college, everybody's talented. As a professional, this much separates you between eighth place to first place. So it really becomes, um, yeah. At one point, she wasn't, we would be at nationals and she wasn't even allowed to come into my hotel room. Yeah, I'm still not. (laughs) <laughs> I still don't. I, right. I mean, now I know it's just, that's her thing. So right. yeah. you know, we just make the plans, and mm. I know I'm going this way. She's right. going that way. But um, yeah, it's uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. But Natasha, I did see something in turn three in my auction yesterday. Turn three? Huh? I'm this one. What happened in turn three? Uh oh. No, I want to hear it now. What happened to no, Turn 3? No, I'm literally just making a joke. I didn't see anything. <laughs> I know nothing about this. I'm, like not, my, my I'm, I'm turning my, in my retirement papers no. August 1st. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about, about Turn 3. But that's it. Have you watched the race? Yeah. How many times have you watched the race? Just a couple times. I'm, I'm, no, I haven't watched. No, I did watch the whole race. Um, we should watch it together. All right. <laughs> Somebody has it. I mean, I thought I was in the game coming off the turn. Which turn? The the second turn. Yeah. Into the home stretch, and then I don't know what happened the last 80, 75 meters. I thought I was too. <laughs> You were in the game. I'm like, yeah, I got this. One, two. That's okay. I'm cool. Then it just slowly, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I was telling her, I looked at, I was watching the show on, mm-hmm. and I didn't know he was in, I didn't realize he had made it back to the semifinals. So uh, when he I didn't saw either. Him come he, didn't. Out, he didn't? No. no. Okay, because when I saw him come out, I nearly lost it in the stadium. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, the show on yeah. People were looking at me like, who's this crazy lady? Yeah. <laughs> but, um. He looks so smooth coming around in lane two. I was like, Sean's in He's there. got it, yeah. And then everybody just started going. I was like, oh my gosh. It just, yeah, our races were uh, identical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah he, he was saying after the race, he was like, man, I, I felt fine. It was just that when I I just couldn't get any power. It was yeah. like I, my muscle wouldn't contract or something, you know? Yeah. And I had to take like twice as many steps to cover the same amount of ground, right. you know? Oh. Hmm. Mike's fine. Okay. So are we gonna watch mine and his? Oh. 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 We put me yeah, on this spot. Yeah. Let's not watch nobody race. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine. Thank you. 
this. That must have been Let me say thank you. Thank I you. think he was joking, but mm -hmm. I mean, he was talking about Monaco. Because mm -hmm. oh, now what I was saying about the names. Yeah. yeah. That may be it. You have the picture? Oh uh, no, this oh. is. I texted Errol too and asked him for some this pictures. This thing is he'll get it to hard. Really? Are we done? <laughs> is it, is it, is it, you know? Yeah, it's mine. Do you have um? Are you on their Wi-Fi? Must be weird, uh, like not yeah, having. Yeah, that's why they have a, a deck down there. Yeah. They don't have a backyard. Mm mm. You have to make that. Yeah. Hmm? What lane are you? Two. You. I can move over to the toes, Oh, you're in two. Mm -hmm. So they made the preferred lanes the outside lane. And mm. it was the outside lanes were definitely preferred lanes. Mm. Yeah. Less wind up there. Yep, yes. those are faster. A lot less wind. Patient, but I, I felt like I needed to adjust for the wind. Okay. That looks good. Yeah, right here I was like, yeah, yeah, and then hmm. there it is. Yeah, we had the same race. <laughs> yeah, that looks like his race. Just give him longer hair. But you know what's crazy? Like I, I don't, I didn't die. I don't feel like I died, exactly. which I haven't felt that in any race this year. Um, even this morning, I don't feel sore. I, did, and yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do any of the stuff that you're talking about. Hydrating, icing, cool down. I didn't even cool down yesterday. Oh. Mm. I did all. I said I did everything right. I, I didn't do any of that. Um, I don't know. Honestly, the the. And I think this is why I, like, I, if I know myself from five years ago. <laughs> To now, this second turn mm -hmm. coming off into the straightaway is why I don't think I'm upset. Because that, that was, I went out there and fought. Yeah. It just wasn't there. Yeah. No, you can't be upset at that. No. making you think you need to go back and not at all uh, not at all you're like hmm. run one more just not to get it right i do year. i do want to run a couple more races this summer just because i don't want my career to end on 52 seconds <laughs> that part i don't want to walk away on a 52 um but as far as the execution of the race i don't know if it's maybe i needed another week maybe i was flat this week like I executed, I gave it a good run. Um, I know what the process has been since having Liam. career was over when I got pregnant. Um, but I, I 
remember having a conversation with, with you that if I wanted to keep going that you would support me. along with just personal things. Um, I didn't give up. <laughs> and I guess if I want to be remembered for anything is that I didn't give up. And I, I would be I would be more disappointed if I looked at yesterday and felt like I punked out. Um, but I felt relaxed. executed and I can't really ask for much more 5235 so. <laughs> I know I'm better than that um, but <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. No, I don't think. I honestly thought when you came off the turn, I thought you were in it, and then they just because I, you know, when I saw the the lineup the night before, I was like, oh my god, it's all over. I honestly, I was, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, you're just gonna enjoy the rest of the meet. But then when I got up in the morning, I was like, okay, wait a minute, she's in lane two. It's not her favorite lane. But she can see everybody. She knows where she is the whole time. Right. Yeah. And she can gauge how she feels based on her race plan and what they're doing and just keep contact. Mm -hmm. And then what she has been doing better this year is finishing. finishing. So I said if she can keep contact but still be comfortable within herself, then she she's in there. Mm hmm um, but never underestimate your competition either. No. No. And so I, I tend to look at everybody and look at their PB and look <laughs> at their season's best and look at what they ran in the heats and do they re do I realistically think they can come back and still run another PB and mm -hmm. um, analysis paralysis. I just did too much of that. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't tell her that, but that's right. what I was looking at. Um, but those girls ran. And uh, you gotta give credit where credit is due. They ran, and when I thought she was gonna go with them, they just said, uh, "Okay." Yeah. But I yeah. think she, mm -hmm. she was there. Yeah.